Hi everyone! In this video, you can probably already tell that I will be showing you a new vacuum cannon. Now this cannon is in a very similar design to my last one. It is piston operated, but you might be able to tell this one is made out of clear PVC pipe, so we'll actually be able to see what's going on inside. I'd also like to try out some viewer suggestions that were made on my last video to see if I can get this cannon working more optimally. So the first change that I've made from my previous version of this cannon is of course the clear PVC pipe. And I couldn't get this in very long lengths shipped to me online, so this is only a five foot cannon. So it will be a little less powerful than my previous piston vacuum cannon, but we will be able to see what goes on inside. Secondly, I have changed the valve on the end. And this is the original flap valve that I tried in my first video that if you watched that video, you saw that I had it mounted vertically like this. Now the most common suggestion that I got in the comments of that video was to mount the valve like this so that when the cannon fired gravity would be assisting to open the valve quickly and so hopefully it wouldn't get hit by the projectile as it passed through. So let me show you what I have now installed on this cannon. So here is my new valve mounted on the underside of the cannon as was suggested so often in the comments of my last video. Now, in those same comments, there were also a lot of suggestions on how to accomplish this because the main issue is, if you mount the valve upside down, it doesn't actually want to hold against the barrel uh, when it's set against it. It will want to fall backwards too easily. There were all sorts of suggestions on how to hold this closed with a latch or with a string that I would then release from the front half of the cannon when I was ready to fire, but I thought all of those were a little too complicated. I think the best suggestion was from one of my Patreon supporters, who suggested I just move the pivot of the hinge further outward, which means when the valve is in the closed position, the center of gravity is going to be pushing against the barrel. So you see it's resting against the barrel now and it's staying closed. But as soon as it passes, this pivot, it wants to fall open. So that's a perfect solution. It takes no extra parts. All I had to do was readjust the hinge. Now the real question is, is this valve now going to open fast enough now that gravity is working with it rather than against it to allow the projectile to come through without actually smashing into the valve? I'm not super confident in this. I'm not sure gravity will help that much, but we can test it right now and find out. Since I'm not sure that this valve will move out of the way fast enough, I may only get one shot at this. So just to be safe, I decided to film this shot at 960 frames per second, the fastest slow motion that I'm capable of. So if it actually does hit the valve, we'll get to see it in super slow motion, even though it's a little bit lower resolution because of how fast the camera is filming. But at least we'll be able to see what happens if this goes wrong. Interesting. Oh, shoot. <sighs> So the projectile definitely hit the valve that time, and I won't know until I watch the high speed back if the valve even opened at all. From how quickly the projectile stopped, it, it dropped right below the cannon, so I expect the valve, it, it must not have opened hardly at all before the projectile slammed into it. As I talked about in my earlier video, the force that I am relying on to open the valve before the projectile hits it is the remaining air that is in the vacuum cannon that was in front of the piston before I actually pulled it back to draw a vacuum inside of the pipe. It's not a total vacuum inside of the pipe, it's just very, very, very low pressure. So when the vacuum refills with atmospheric pressure, there's already some air in front of the projectile already, and it's that air that I'm relying on pushing the valve out of the way before the projectile hits it. So since this valve survived my first test, although obviously it failed to open quite fast enough, I have another viewer suggestion that I can now try to see if I can make this valve function. And that is to start with the piston not quite so far forward in the pipe when I pull it back to draw the vacuum. 
Now that will mean that the cannon is quite a bit weaker because the vacuum will not be as strong if there's more air remaining in front of the piston before I pull it back. However, it will mean there is more air inside the pipe once the cannon fires to push the valve out of the way. So it'll be a trade-off of power for functionality. Maybe the valve will work, but it definitely won't be quite as powerful of a shot. Okay, I have the piston pushed up to about the first zip tie that's holding on my valve assembly. So that should be a place that I can consistently bring the piston back to. So if this works, I should be able to repeat it. Well, at first glance that seemed to work, but we'll have to see what it looks like in high speed. That last one seems to have damaged the valve somewhat, so it definitely hit it, unfortunately. Well, that is unfortunate. I've now tried three different times with different levels of air cushion in front of the piston to push the valve open, and every time the projectile has still hit the valve. And actually, it's damaged to a point now that I don't think I'll be able to fire it again at least not with this valve on. I can still use the foil burst discs. So it looks like until I come up with a better solution for the front valve than just a gravity assisted flap valve, I don't think this is gonna work. I'm gonna have to still use burst discs on the front of my vacuum cannons. So having just watched back the high speed footage of my first shot, I guess the rest of you probably already noticed that the projectile came off of the front of the piston. So it actually didn't have to travel all the way down the barrel before hitting the valve. And that's why the valve survived the first shot, but it broke on the following shots. The reason that the projectile stayed at the front of my cannon for my first shot is due both to the fact that this clear PVC pipe is a little bit wavy on the inside and I find it's a little more constricted on the, uh, on the far end. And so my projectiles can sometimes get lodged once they're pressed all the way to the front. Now it's partially that and it's also partially because of my new projectile holding device on the front end of the piston. In my previous cannon, I just taped the projectiles to the front of the piston. In this version, I have a little piece of vinyl tube that is bolted to the front. And what this does is it allows me to put my end cap projectile over the vinyl tube. Now the projectile is lightly held on the pipe, enough so that I can fire this cannon without having to hold it on with tape. But unfortunately, it does come off easy enough that if you have an uneven piece of pipe like this, it may get lodged inside on occasion. This shouldn't be a problem if you're using actual two inch regular PVC pipe for your barrel. But with this clear stuff, it's made to just not quite the same level of precision. Something else that a whole lot of you asked to see was what it would look like if I had smoke behind this vacuum cannon so that when the chamber repressurized, smoke would be drawn in after it and we'd maybe be able to see the airflow. So let's give that a try with this here. Sweet, jeez. may not work because the smoke gets in the way. Well, I'll have to see how those shots turned out once I get this footage, <laughs> once I get this footage back on my computer but I'm not super confident that worked well. If these shots did not turn out well, I'll insert a shot here of my previous four inch bore cannon where I pulled cornstarch into the vacuum. And I think that will give you the effect that a lot of you asked for. The final thing I would like to speak about in this video is the answer to the question I posed in the comments of my previous one. And that is why do these piston operated vacuum cannons seem to have no recoil? Many of you thought the bigger question was why should a vacuum cannon have recoil since there's no back of the chamber that it should have an equal and opposite reaction against. 
but that's not quite the case. So when a vacuum cannon fires and the atmospheric pressure is rushing in to fill the barrel, at the same time, atmospheric pressure is pressing from the burst disc on the opposite end. And so that is pushing the cannon backwards. That is why a vacuum cannon should have recoil. And it's why my large four inch bore vacuum cannon did have recoil. The reason that this one does not is because atmospheric pressure is pushing backwards on this pipe but it is doing so with the exact same force that it requires to pull the piston out of the pipe. So as I pull the piston back, I'm tensioning the lines that are holding the vacuum cannon down. And that tension that is on the lines is exactly proportional to the amount of recoil the cannon will have when it finally does fire. So it does recoil, but it is with the exact same force as it took to pull the piston out. And so you don't see any additional movement as the projectile is fired down the barrel. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear more questions, more suggestions, and project ideas. I always read all of my comments, and so it's a highlight of my day when you leave me one. If you would like to, you can support me on Patreon. I could use your support to continue making better and better videos on this channel. And no matter in what way you support me, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.